Hi, my name is Baron Stone. I'm an engineer with National Instruments. In this video, I want to introduce you to the new NI 573X adapter modules for NI Flex Rio and the example instrument driver that we've developed to help you quickly get started. An NI Flex Rio consists of a PXI or PXI Express module with a field programmable gate array that's user programmable with LabVIEW graphical system design software and an adapter module which provides analog or digital I.O. an interface to the physical world. This one here is the NI5734. It's part of our new line of high-speed digitizer adapter modules for NIFlex Rio, which provides sampling rates up to 120 mega samples per second, 12 to 16 bits of resolution, and two or four input channels. Before our new example instrument driver, you would have to program the host and FPGA applications before taking any measurements with your NIFlex Rio. But with these new tools, you can now more quickly get up and running and easily take measurements with your new system. The NI FlexRio Instrument Development Library is a collection of LabVIEW host and FPGA code which is designed to provide FPGA capabilities commonly found in instruments such as acquisition engines, DRAM interfaces, and trigger logic, along with the associated host APIs. The NI 573XR Example Instrument Driver builds on top of this instrument development library to deliver a familiar software API and default FPGA personality for NI 573X digitizer adapter modules. It's designed to allow you to quickly begin taking measurements and allows you to modify both the host and FPGA code to suit your application. You can now download the NI Flex Rio Instrument Development Library and the NI 573X Example Instrument Driver from NI Labs. Since the NI 573X Example Instrument Driver builds on top of the NI Flex Rio Instrument Development Library, it's important that you first install the Instrument Development Library, then install the 573X Example Driver. Once you've installed both of those, you'll find several example VIs located under the NI573X Instrument Driver directory in the Start menu under the National Instruments folder. Let's go ahead and open up the Getting Started with Trigger example. Looking at the front panel, we see some of the basic options we would need to configure a simple triggered scope acquisition. We select the hardware resource to use, specify the number of pre- and post-trigger samples we want to take, and then choose which channel we want to trigger on and which input level to trigger off of. If we look at the block diagram, we see a series of VIs that look similar to those used in NI Scope. We have an open session VI, a VI to configure the record, a VI to configure the trigger settings, then a VI to initiate the acquisition, a VI to read those samples that were acquired, and then finally a VI to close out the session. We can use this example as is to get basic functionality out of our NI5734 adapter module immediately. But before I demonstrate that, I want to show you the hardware that we have set up here. This is the NI5734 digitizer adapter module, which is on the front of an NI7965R FlexRio FPGA module. To provide a signal source for this demonstration, I've connected channel 0 of the NI5734 to a PXIE5442 arbitrary waveform generator, which is configured to produce a 1 MHz, 1 volt peak-to-peak -peak sine wave. There's also a DAT card in this system, which we'll be using later to provide a digital trigger source. So now that you understand the hardware setup we have here, let's go back to that getting started with trigger example we were looking at earlier. All we need to do to use this example is select our real resource, choose the number of pre and post trigger samples we want, in this case I'll take 500 of each, and then select the channel and level to trigger on. I'm going to leave these values as default. We run the VI and you can see the sampled waveform of our 1 MHz sine wave. So without modifying any LabVIEW code, we were just able to take a basic level triggered acquisition using the NI5734 digitizer module. But that's just the beginning. The real purpose of the example instrument driver is to act as a stepping stone towards developing customized applications. So let's look back at that host VI. One thing you may have noticed is that by default this example returns values to us as raw, unscaled data. If we want to convert these values into volts, we need to scale them by the number of volts per ADC code of the digitizer. Fortunately, the example driver has a VI to provide us with that information. You can find the NI573X example instrument driver in the functions palette under instrument I.O. in the instrument driver section. As you can see, the NI5735X module's palette is minimal and doesn't provide nearly the functionality we would expect from a full-featured instrument driver such as NIScope but it does include a configure vertical VI, which we can use to modify the channel gain, select AC or DC coupling, select the input filter, and get that volts per ADC code scaling factor we need. So let's incorporate that into our example.
Since the NI573X fetch VI returns values as unscaled ADC data, all we need to do to convert it to volts is multiply by the volts per ADC code value from the NI573X configure vertical VI. Now we can clearly see that the input sine wave is between positive and negative 5 volts. But the NI5734 has an input range between plus or minus 1 volt, so we're only utilizing half of the input range of our ADC. We can use the NI5738's configure vertical VI to apply a gain to our input signal before it's digitized. In this case, let's apply a gain of 2 by wiring a constant to the gain input of the NI5738's configure vertical VI. Now when we run the VI, it still shows that the signal is 1 volt peak to peak, but we've effectively increased the resolution of our measurement by doubling the number of codes to represent the signal. So that shows how we can use the example driver for the NI573X to get up and running quickly and configure some basic measurements. I want to point out that up till now, we've only looked at the host LabVIEW code. We haven't looked at any LabVIEW FPGA code or had to recompile any FPGA bit files. But let's say we want to add a custom trigger to our application. After all, that's one of the benefits of using NIFlexRio. As I mentioned before, the NI573X example driver is built on top of the NIFlexRio instrument development library. It uses pre-compiled bit files to provide the basic acquisition functionality, but we can go in and modify those uh, FPGA code to get our own custom operations. To access the underlying FPGA code, we can navigate to Start, Programs, National Instruments, NI FlexRio Instrument Development Library, Examples, 573X, Acquisition Engine, and then select the target we're using. In this case, I'm using the 7965. In the project view, we select the module we're using and then open up the FPGA VI. This is the underlying FPGA code which interfaces with the NI5738X example driver API we looked at a moment ago. You can see that it basically consists of three single cycle time loops. The top left loop is used to write commands to the NI5738X module for configuration. The actual command data is formatted on the host and then transferred to the FPGA code to be written to the correct location by that loop. The bottom left loop handles the triggering and acquisition. This VI contains the logic used to determine if a trigger condition has occurred. When a trigger has occurred, it notifies the other VIs to acquire a record, and then, which is then put into a FIFO. The third loop over on the bottom right acts as a consumer, pulling those records out of the FIFO, buffering them in DRAM, and then ultimately sending them to the host whenever a fetch is called. We can modify this code to change the behavior of our NIFlexRio and adapter module to suit our specific application. Right now, this example is designed to trigger on an analog edge rising above a given threshold. Let's say we want to trigger on that event, but we also would want to trigger if we received a digital signal on one of our PXI trig lines. Let's look at how we could do that. In the FPGA code, we can see that the acquisition engine trigger VI has an input from the host to trigger immediately. Let's modify that so it'll trigger immediately if we receive a signal from the host or if we receive a digital high signal on the PXI trig 1 line. We place the FPGA IO node, then select the line we want to receive the trigger from. In this case, I'll choose PXI trig 1. Then we put a Boolean OR in line with the trigger immediate signal coming out of the acquisition engine trigger VI. And that's all we need to do to change the FPGA. Now we'll need to recompile the bit file. To do that, we go to the project and expand the build specification section to see the pre-made compilation specification. Right click on it and select build to begin the compilation process. Depending on your computer, this compilation could take anywhere from several minutes to several hours. So for the sake of time in this video, we're going to skip ahead to after the compilation is completed. Now that our changes to the FPGA code have been compiled, let's go back to the host VI and run it to see how it affects our acquisition. If we run the host VI as with the previous settings that we've been using, you can see it triggers immediately because the 1 volt peak to peak sine wave we have as an input will be crossing that zero point trigger level. If we want to prevent that from occurring, we can go in and set this trigger level to be much higher. And again, this is in unscaled raw data uh, values but it'll be much higher than the 1 volt peak to peak wave we have coming in. So now if I run this, let me clear the graph first. You'll notice that the VI doesn't trigger immediately off of that crossing trigger level. So if we want to execute the other condition, that digital pulse trigger, I've created a simple VI here, which just sends a digital pulse on PXI trig1 using the DAT Cardiner system. 
So you see if I click this button and send that trigger, now our NI5734 digitizer has been triggered and taken those measurements. So to conclude this video, we've seen how you can get up and running quickly with the NI573X digitizer adapter module and NIFlexRio by using the example driver that's available on ni.com labs. That example driver builds on top of the NIFlexRio instrument development library and allows you to modify the default FPGA personality to suit your application. Together, the example driver and the instrument development library provide a good starting point for using NIFlexRio and LabVIEW FPGA to develop customized hardware solutions tailored to your application. Thanks for watching.